Hi. Uh, I had um, recently a spiritual impression for one of a better terminology. Um, that's probably the best way I can describe it. Um, where I was kind of seeing into um, the time of Elijah in the Old Testament. And what I became aware of was that, I, you know, about it being a time of crisis. And obviously we see that, that that was a time of crisis in the na nation of Israel. And um, particularly brought on by the fact that Elijah pronounces uh, no rain for several years. And so they go into a time of um, famine. Uh, and what I became aware of is that the time of crisis uh, becomes the time of miracles. That was the kind of overwhelming thing that uh, came forth to me uh, from the Lord about um, the time of Elijah. And uh, so I'm going to just go over a few verses from First Kings 17 and talk about that a little bit um, about a time of crisis becoming a time of miracles now realizing and remembering too that at the beginning of 2020 the world really uh, changed forever and um, and it's not going to go back to the way it was we sort of in, in our country we sort of have a semblance of uh, normality I guess in a sense uh, and we're, we're very very blessed at this point anyway to be relatively COVID free um, in New Zealand uh, and Lord please help India and Brazil those nations where uh, COVID is threatening to overcome them uh, you know, there's lots of prayer requests coming from India at the moment. Uh, and if you read about Brazil, um, I think you may be, in relation to COVID, I think you may be shocked. Um, but we will still have times of crisis in New Zealand too. And uh, we may be having a bit of peace at the moment, but it's a peace before the next um, storm and I'm not saying that to be just negative or be um, like an Old Testament prophet or something like that I'm saying that uh, you know we even in the times of crisis you know God takes care of his people and that's one of the things we see in first Kings 17 so let's have a look at it uh, the first verse says and Elijah who was from Tishbe and Gilead told King Ahab uh, he makes this declaration. To, just notice the first thing is that he's from somewhere called Tishbe. He's a Tishbe. It's really <laughs> a pretty much unknown, unheard of place um, in the Old Testament. Certainly not a well-known place like Jerusalem or Bethlehem or Hebron or something like that. Uh, so, you know, um, uh, significant people can come from unknown places and unknown backgrounds. And uh, remember, too, that he's, you know, Elijah and John the Baptist are kind of types of each other in the Bible. And that, remember what I said recently, is that John the Baptist wasn't from the palace, but he spoke to the palace. And I think there's a lot in that. If you just meditate on that about the fact that, um, you know, the New Testament tells us both those things. Jesus pointed out that John wasn't from the palace. And, and Luke also pointed out to us that John spoke to the palace. He actually rebuked um, the people of the palace. It's worth thinking about that um, more. Uh, but anyway, um, he says to King Ahab, who's this, you know, evil king who's married to Jezebel. And he's just so severely compromised uh, that it's unreal. Um as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, 
the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. It's very interesting that Elijah says, until I give the word. So he's speaking with great authority here. Now it's the authority of God, but it's been given to him and he understands that he is speaking the word. We work in partnership with God. But anyway, the first thing I want to point out to you is that in a time of crisis, this is obviously, you know, this became a time of famine, like I said. In a time of crisis, one of the things that will happen is powerful prophetic declarations, powerful decrees from the people of God. And you need to be open and ready for this in your church meetings and your prayer meetings. Powerful spiritual decrees from the people of God. Uh, then it says in verse 2, Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go to the east and hide by Kirith Brook, near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. The next thing we see is that there is a powerful supernatural provision during this time. And that's the next thing you need to know, that in a time of crisis, you can trust God and believe God, and you need to do this actually, it needs to be an active thing in your life, not just some um, passive thing. Uh, but you need to actively um, believe God and exercise your faith for his provision in your life in a time of crisis. You know, if you, if, if you start to feel a pinch with money, call in more money. Uh, meditate on the scriptures um, about provision. I need to actively do this uh, and exercise your faith in that area. But, you know, as you do that, you can trust that God will supernaturally provide for you from wherever he wants. And um, then that brook actually dried up and it says that Elijah went to Sidon, which is up north. Um, not even part of Israel. So he actually goes to a foreigner. Jesus points that out that about um, these guys in the Old Testament going to prophets and so on, going to foreigners. Um, and then he's um, he and a widow and her son are supernaturally provided for uh, up, in, up north and side on. So um, this supernatural provision um, continues. Uh, but notice also the fact that he went to a foreigner. You know, God will bring provision to you from wherever he wants. It won't necessarily come from other Christian believers. It may come from ungodly people even. And, and God often has a way of doing that. So understand and allow for that too. Um, so they have this miraculous provision. Um, Elijah and the widow and her son where um, the flour and the olive oil in her containers uh, never never run out. They were about to run out when Elijah turns up. Um, but uh, he says, hey, just go and prepare some food and some drink for me. And um, and she obeys, and then the, the uh, food supply and drink supply never runs out. Um, and then the next thing that happens is that uh, the woman's son becomes um, sick and he dies and she's very distressed and she says oh man of God and this is in verse 18 what have you done to me have you come here to point out my sins and kill my son now you know when these negative things happen um, people can become quite upset and uh, pardon me uh, but Elijah replied give me your son and he took the child's body from her arms and carried him upstairs laid the body on his bed and Elijah cried out to the Lord this is a very real cry when you hear this he says O Lord my God why have you brought tragedy to this widow who has opened her home to me causing her son to die so we can be very real with God and we can ask him why when negative things happen uh, but the thing I just want to point out to you here from a prophetic point of view about this is that Elijah's crying out why, but he doesn't stay in that place. And it says in verse 21, he stretched himself out over the child three times, cried out to the Lord, O Lord, 
My God, please let this child's life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's prayer and the life of the child returned and he revived. He came back to life. Is resurrected. So uh, just a couple of things here before and before we jump into the point that I just began to bring out is I want to say that in a time of crisis is a time of healings and the gift of working of miracles, the gift of faith um, and all the gifts of the spirit um, that in a time of crisis, the miraculous will come forth and i really believe that uh, just recently the lord's been saying that he wants to release us much more into that time into a time of healings into a time of uh, miracles into a time of powerful um, declarations prophetic declarations uh, into a time of supernatural provision greater supernatural provision even than ever before so I really want you to get these points. Whoever's listening to me, get these points. Take them on board. This is for you uh, from the Lord. The Lord didn't just reveal this to me for, for nothing. It's something that he's saying and wanting to get across to us. Uh, but the other thing I want you to notice is that Elijah did not camp out on the why question. You know, something negative happened and he cried out to God and said, why? You know, why has this happened? Um, but he didn't camp out there. He moved on from that. It's very, very important. You can ask God why, and God will give you answers why. Uh, you know, sometimes we say why when somebody dies prematurely, or we say why when somebody doesn't seem to get healed straight away. All these different sorts of things, the questions that we have, or some other negative thing happens, and we say why. But And it's fine to say why, and like I say, God will, you know, I've asked God why about things, about negative things, and he's given me answers. Um, but don't camp out there, don't get stuck at the why camp, because that is a very bad place to be stuck at. So you've got to move on from that and continue into, you know, the miraculous, into what God has for you because there will sometimes you will come across situations where there's some kind of a negative thing happens uh, that happens um, but you mustn't you know get stuck on those things and you mustn't camp out there and oh why 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 did this happen and and allow it to become a something negative that kind of overcomes your life you must move on from that and Elijah moved on from that very quickly and actually into um, the miraculous so don't get stuck there don't get stuck at the uh, why camp but this is the main point I want to say to you is that the Lord what I felt the Lord was wanting to get across to me and across to you is that in times of crises in a time of crisis that it's a it's like a breeding ground for, ground for healings and miracles that the Lord wants to bring forth um, the supernatural you know, uh, power, I'll say it again, powerful prophetic um, declarations, uh, supernatural provision, healing, the working of miracles, the gift of faith tends to jump in there with that word of knowledge, word of wisdom, uh, you know, all these things, all the nine gifts of this spirit. Uh, but it, it's a time for that. The time of crisis is going to become for believers, it's going to become uh, the time of the miraculous. So please take that on board, uh, receive it, and um, run with it. 